So next up on the agenda, and again, we're still building these access policies that we're trying to basically propagate information down to the leaf switches. And we had just talked about interface policy groups, and now remember, we're gonna flip all the way kind of to, we're gonna skip a little section in the middle of our chart that we're trying to build out here, and we're gonna go all the way to the other end. And what we're talking about here is VLANs. And VLANs within ACI, they're not like the VLANs that we know and love from our traditional Ethernet switching days, right? Uh, again, in the introduction video, I think it was the intro, it's been a while, uh, we talked about how we've been doing networking the same way for many, many years, right? We, we blurred those lines between layer two and layer three constructs. Uh, and, and we basically always said, hey, within this VLAN, i.e. this broadcast domain, we're always associating this layer three subnet, this prefix, whatever, with it. And that's where we filter traffic, mark traffic, all, all that stuff. And that's really where we've been for a long, long time. Well, no longer with ACI is a VLAN where we identify things. We are going to use VLANs for the classification of a lot of traffic, um, but for the most part, the VLANs are, are no longer important, right? You could have completely different VLANs on all of your different leaf switches, and it's not really going to matter because it's just how the system is using those VLANs on that particular switch to classify traffic that, that really matters. So again, let me, let me zoom in here. We'll kind of go through this, and then I'll give you guys uh, hopefully a good example of what, what's kind of really going on here. So VLANs are, and again, I took uh, a little quote here from the uh, ACI help guide because if you click on, when, when we, I'll actually show this to you when we get within the, um, within the APIC GUI, but there's these help icons and stuff where you can gather information about certain sections that you're in, like this VLAN pool. If you click on that, it actually opens up this ACI help guide. And within there, they classify VLANs as namespace policy that defines ID ranges used for VLAN encapsulation. And it, it kind of is a little bit hard to understand that, but again, really what they're trying to drive home is, hey, these VLANs aren't necessarily dictating a specific broadcast domain or a specific subnet but we are going to use that VLAN or that form of encapsulation for classification within our leaf switch. And I'll, I'll whiteboard this out so that hopefully uh, it'll make a little bit more sense for you uh, kind of moving forward, right? So we use quite a few things really to classify traffic within ACI, uh, not just VLANs, uh, but VLANs is, you know, whoops, definitely one of those. So we have our, our VLANs, um, we can classify traffic based on NV, GRE. Uh, we can classify traffic based on VXLAN. And this is part of, uh, you know, basically the leaf switch. We'll take any of these uh, and it'll go through a process called normalization. Okay, so it, it, it will take the input from any of these three right now. I think these are the only three. Um, and, and we'll normalize that within the leaf switch, meaning, you know, based on our configuration, it will be tied to a specific VXLAN or VNI within the ACI leaf switch itself. So VLAN is just one of the different methods that we use to, to really go in there and, and classify traffic within these systems. Now, I want to show you guys hopefully a little bit better uh, of an example so that it makes sense to you guys because I, it, it is a hard concept to wrap our minds around, right? And one of the big reasons that they, you know, proposed moving to something like VXLAN instead of, uh, you know, normal just VLAN based traffic is one, you know, a, a VLAN, the, the bits that define a VLAN is only 12. So that gives us like 4,094 combinations um, to run within our network in terms of VLAN IDs. With VXLAN, that has expanded, right? The VNI is 24 bits, so we get a little over 16 million possible combinations of VNIs. So really now we're limited to VLANs. We're, we still have that 4,094 limit if we're using VLANs for our classification purpose, but that's going to be on a per domain basis within ACI. So we can replicate that actually many times within ACI, uh, depending on the actual port and the domain that that port's tied to. So we're not really with VXLAN anymore. We're not bound by that limitation of the 12 bits within the VLAN header. So 
to kind of show you guys what goes on within ACI. And I hope I can make this as clear as mud, right? Actually, I hope I can get it a little clearer than mud. Um, but I want to take, let's just draw two switches here. I'm going to draw leaf one. And then I'm going to draw leaf two. And the only reason I'm doing two switches is I want to try to convey something to you guys as we move forward. So up here is going to be, you know, our ACI fabric. So what happens as we go in here, let's just pretend um, that maybe we have a bare metal server hanging off of each of these. So let's, let's configure a port here. And this port's going to hang off to a particular, so it doesn't really matter what the server is. We're just going to call it a uh, a bare metal host. And maybe this guy is tagging traffic, maybe he's not. It, it doesn't really matter. What we're doing within ACI, it, it, again, if you go back to our basic networking constructs, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to create these things called bridge domains. And then within that bridge domain is going to be, you know, our subnets. Okay. So as we, you know, basically propagate, let's say, I'm actually going to put some colors to this. Let's, let's make some happy little switches, right? Um, so we'll call this, you know, the red subnet. And let's say that both of these guys are within that red subnet. So as we actually bring those endpoints up uh, on these individual leaf switches, what happens is this bridge domain configuration is actually going to get pushed out to these leaves, okay? And when we go in there and we actually do the demo on this and we actually start to bring up some endpoints, what we're going to see is that the, the bridge domain internally is actually going to be assigned a VLAN. So the bridge domain on this guy may be assigned VLAN 10, and then the bridge domain on this side may be assigned VLAN 9. They don't have to be the same, right? What, what matters is that ultimately these guys or this bridge domain is mapped to the same VNI. Remember, a bridge domain is kind of synonymous with a VNI. So let's say that this guy has uh, a VNI of, you know, 1202. So as long as on both sides, the VXLAN VNI is um, 1202, it really doesn't matter what the VLAN is. Okay, it doesn't matter at all. And this guy's is going to be done, you know, automatically for us. We, we don't have to do anything. We don't have to configure that VLAN. It, it, it's just going to be. Okay, it's just going to be. Um, and then what happens with what we're doing right now is we're provisioning what's known as VLAN pools. And we haven't talked about some of the constructs I'm about to talk about. We're going to get into them in the next videos. But basically, we're going to take these VLAN pools that we create. So maybe I come in and I create a VLAN pool and it has, you know, I think in our example I used VLAN 50 and VLAN 51. And I know my head's kind of blocking that there. I can kind of scoot over a little bit here. Um, we create this VLAN pool and we're going to create some other configuration. We're going we're gonna to tie this, you know, to what, what we call a domain. And if we're doing bare metal servers, this is going to be uh, what we refer to as a physical domain. Well, what happens is, as we go into our configuration, we may tell the fabric that this port is going to use an encapsulation of VLAN 50, and this port's going to use an encapsulation of VLAN 51. Again, these guys, even though they're on the same subnet, they don't have to be on the same VLAN because we're not tying a subnet to a specific VLAN anymore. That's what we're trying to get away from, right? It doesn't matter. They don't have to be on the same subnet, same VLAN, as long as they're in the same bridge domain, even if they're not in the same bridge domain, okay? They're going to be able to communicate across this fabric as long as the policy on the back end allows it, i.e. we have the proper contracts and filters in place and then our provider-consumer relationships between what we're going to learn are our EPGs. So what happens is, internally, again, we're going to see a VLAN 50 in this guy's database and a VLAN 51 in this guy's database. Okay, and, and they're going to name it, um, it's going to be named with the EPG, so it's actually going to have the, the endpoint group's name tied to that specific VLAN on both sides. And, and, and again, we're going to see this in the demo. But what happens is, remember, these guys are ultimately part of this bridge domain. So what they do internally within the system is this VLAN is actually going to have a relationship with the, with the, the kind of granddaddy bridge domain. Okay, so they're going to have an internal mapping saying, hey, you know what, this 
This specific VLAN is also mapped to the bridge domain VLAN, which ultimately belongs to the same VNI. Okay, so again, this is going to be done on the backside. I do have a, a super secret ninja command that I'll show you guys when we do get into the demo uh, of how we can kind of trace this back and map all these different pieces together. Because again, you go in there and you create these two VLANs, mapping them to you know individual ports on both of these lead switches. Well, you go in there and you run a show VLAN extended or whatever you do. Uh, and, and you expect just to see one VLAN, but all of a sudden you see two. You see that one for the bridge domain, as well as that one for the, the EPG that you just created uh, that's mapped to that specific port. So again, VLANs really don't matter like they used to with ACI. We're really just taking these VLAN identifiers, and again, kind of skipping apart. This is part of what makes ACI a little bit hard to explain, is this guy is going to be mapped to an actual what we learn is an endpoint group, okay? And remember, if these guys are in the same EPG, um, they're gonna be able to communicate by default because intra um, EPG communication is allowed. If you go inter EPG, that's when you really have to have contracts in place. And some of those semantics have changed with the, the latest version of ACI as well. But again, we're talking about VLANs here, so let's get back on track. Um, VLANs are just used for classification. Now, there's two different types of VLANs um, that we really have to deal with. And again, let me get my head out of the way here. We can create uh, what we call a static allocation pool or a dynamic allocation pool. And normally, if you're doing layer two, layer three handoffs, uh, configuring bare metal hosts like, like we just depicted in the prior one, we're going to use something called static VLAN allocation. And that's where we explicitly go in and we say, hey, you know what? Uh, this specific port has got this specific VLAN encapsulation, um, and, and you're referencing this pool that we've created here. So again, it'd kind of be like I just depicted in that last diagram because uh, we had VLANs 50 and 51. Do we also have dynamic allocation? And this is if you're going to be using a VMM domain. And we'll get a little bit more into this um, as we get into the VMM domain discussion. But basically, when you integrate with vCenter, and then you create an endpoint group that is tied to the VMM domain, uh, what the Apex is going to do is it's dynamically going to pull a VLAN out of that pool or the VLAN pool that's associated to that VMM domain. So there, we're not explicitly telling it what VLANs to use. We're just giving it a range of VLANs and letting the APIC choose kind of what it wants to do. Um, there is a, one instance, um, I, I'd kind of be remiss if I didn't mention it here. Um, there is one instance where the VLAN ID does matter, um, and that's if we're doing like a, a extended layer two out. So if we're extending layer two outside of the fabric, so say we have these servers, and let's pretend that these servers are like this guy's 10, 10, 10, 10, slash 24. And maybe we're in some sort of you know, migration scenario. Uh, we've mapped this server. Let's, let's say we've mapped this server to this thing called you know, the app EPG or the app endpoint group. Well, what would happen if uh, we were migrating servers you know, off a traditional data center network onto the ACI fabric. And let's say that we had, you know, a port over here, right, that was going off uh, to maybe our, our data center, you know, 5548 switch. And then back here, you know, we still had servers on that subnet. So maybe we had, you know, this server over here who was 10, 10, 10, 11, slash 24. And we still needed that layer two communication to go between these two hosts. And let's say over here, you know, on the data center uh, local area network, this guy was on VLAN 100, okay? Well, in this specific case, off this specific port, this VLAN would be important, right? Because basically, we would need to be extending VLAN 100 tagged into the fabric. Does that make sense? So when VLAN 100 came in, we may map this to an external layer two domain. Okay, and maybe we call this, you know, EPG uh, external layer two. Okay, then that VLAN ID is important. So like when we came to provision the actual pool uh, that was gonna go on this interface, we would need to make sure that our pool included this VLAN 100 in it. 
right? Because we're saying anything that comes in in Captain 100 in here, we want to stuff in this EPG. And then of course we would have to write a contract in order to facilitate communication between this EPG and this EPG and basically dictate, you know, what they could use to talk together. So in that case, you know, the VLAN is important, but again, it's being used at that point for classification purposes within that external layer two endpoint group. So um, it, 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 it again, it is a brave new world with ACI, right? And it's important to kind of understand these semantics when you go to do this configuration. Um, but again, the VLANs are really just being used for classification purposes. What else might we need to do here? within this specific maybe bridge domain, because this, this would be tied you know, within this bridge domain as well. This might be one of those scenarios where you allow layer two flooding to occur, right? Because you'd need that layer two flooding uh, maybe to stretch ARP requests from this host over to that other host. So in some, some instances, it is important. Now, when we're looking at um, the actual pool itself, Notice what I did in here. Uh, again, let me zoom in. I keep, I keep zooming out to my mug. I need to zoom back in because my mug's in the way. Um, notice that we have VLANs 50 and 51. And, and kind of like I did my interface selectors, I, I, I usually, unless I'm doing a dynamic pool, I'll normally go in there and configure my VLAN encapsulations uh, in single blocks. So basically, uh, if I had VLANs 50 through 100, more than likely I'd script it, but <laughs> um, the end result would be the same is that I would have identified 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. And again, that's just for flexibility. If I had some reason to go in there, you know, later down the road and, and remove one of those uh, VLANs, it's not going to be this big rigmarole where I have to delete the VLAN range and then recreate it all. Now, if we zoom back out uh, to, to, you know, this was our diagram. We had our switch profiles, we had our interface profiles with our port selectors. The port selectors were referencing these interface policy groups, uh, specifically access port policy groups and port channel policy groups. Now we're going to be adding our VLAN pools. So what we'll typically have is one VLAN pool per domain. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is actually the domains, but you're going to have like, if we're doing an external layer two domain, we're going to have a VLAN pool for that external layer two connectivity. Uh, likewise, for maybe our bare metal host, for our physical pool, um, we may define a range within there and then, you know, the other ones individually. Uh, for our virtual machine manager domain, we might have a unique VMM pool, and this would be a dynamic allocation pool, unlike these two that were the static allocation method, okay? So the next video, we're going to be talking about these different domains that we can use and basically those domains are going to contain these encapsulation blocks.